really like to introduce you now to the Megan players, who I'm going to just say a little bit about. Um, the reason, no, I'm going to do that afterwards. So I'm going to give you a little bio first about Megan. Uh, she calls herself a teacher artist healer. She's self-taught. She has a degree in art history. Uh, her last job was as an art teacher in a secondary school. She's taught in Africa, in Malawi, and Tanzania. Tanzania, thank you. Uh, she lived in a Lepra village, Lepra Sea village, uh, and uh, gave shatsu to the people there. Uh, she did an exchange between some African children and some English children where you did some minor print work. She does a lot of things, um, and so I'm going to introduce you to Megan. <laughs> well, kids at school never clapped for me, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in the deep end now. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you everybody for coming. Um, yeah, uh, on reflection, this exhibition was one of the well, it seems really sad at my age to say it's the biggest thing I've done in many ways. And um, it's a, like an accumulation of my life happened at this really important time that's been such a big time for everybody. Mm -hmm. And what I had wanted to do was, the first lockdown for me was, because it's about lockdown, it's, it's a very political exhibition actually, it's very political and very uh, spiritual and very physical humans, I think, it, for me, it touched all levels of our existence. And um, for me, the first lockdown was just suicidal, really. It was a really hard time for me. And it was the cutoff of me from people, the cutoff of other people, because I could feel the cutoff of everybody, and our freedom being taken away from us absolutely terrified me. But it was so easy for the government to say, stay home, and everyone did that. And I was terrified, more, much more terrified by that than of the COVID virus. Because if we're not free, we aren't, we're not alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my previous exhibition that I'd made of these paintings, which for those of you who don't know, they are five minute paintings that were from warm ups from live drawing sessions. Um, they're just quick, they were quick sketches, but eventually I had about 500 of them. And um, Chris Black at the back kindly offered zigzag building to me a few years ago as a, as a perfect venue for hanging them. So after that exhibition, they've been wrapped up in my studio, all tied up, just like me. And they were all, you know, in, um, with string and under a plan chest trapped. And I was like, God, this is how it feels. How I feel. And, um, so I wanted to bring them out, but I wanted to build on them because everything's a building from before. And so I invited people from the public, uh, non-models, but not some models to come, to model their lockdown experience. Because I realized sort of halfway through the lockdown that some people were having a good time. And I thought, oh, this is really interesting. I'm at my absolute darkest point ever and other people are just, wow, this is great. I see my kids, I'm relaxing, I have lions, we have lots of discos, we have the old bloody pizza oven. You know, this is so good. Oh, this is really interesting that we're all doing this experience and having the full range of human experience at this time. And for me, that just seemed huge, just really huge. And so that's what my show is about. And people kindly came and uh, I painted them. And normally when I'm working I, on a life drawing day, you know, it's on a big board like this, and you know, there's the model and I'm painting. Well, actually the model, the model can't see me, and I'm painting, and so I'm in my little private world, and there's other people in the class, or the day, and so I'm so private, and nobody, and I just put away my paintings, and then a few weeks later I might pull them out and look at them. Whereas for the, work at Zigzag, the models came to the Zigzag building in this completely huge empty space, top floor, windows all around, completely naked with all these windows. And there was something so poignant about that nakedness. And, and I was on the floor painting and they could see me working and that's really hard. 
that people could see me at my, as it turned out, my most vulnerable. I didn't realize it's my most vulnerable until I, people were looking at me and I thought, this is so scary. <laughs> and, but, but I did it and the models did it. And um, we were also at our most vulnerable, us naked bodies. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Very liberated. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is show the film because mm -hmm. there are some people here that didn't come to the exhibition and didn't, didn't have the experience and I think it would help yeah. it if people saw it and then you can talk a bit more about yeah. it afterwards, is that okay? Yeah. Um, I just put the film in context, I came to uh, Megan's exhibition and I think like quite a few people I found it absolutely stunning uh, on lots of and lots of levels in the way that you were talking. It wasn't just an intellectual or, a, or an artistic stunning. It was a sort of heartfelt, almost spiritual experience being amongst all these people that were filling this space. And uh, almost immediately I proposed to Megan that I'd like to follow her process over a couple of months and make a film about it. Um, and in the film you'll see there's also a musician because during the period that it was up, and I know you were one of them, Di. Uh, there were different people who collaborated with the installation, which is also what makes this work really interesting. It's not just a thing that happened. It actually was a very alive thing. And lots of people were so stimulated by it that they came and did performances, they played music, and I made a film about it. Yeah? So we'll just watch the film, and then we'll talk a bit more, and then we'll open it up to you. Well, it's been really interesting uh, because people come with so much fear and anticipation and um, insecurity. Um, but I think I, I managed to quickly dispel that because we do a lot of chatting beforehand. Oh, we're chatting while I'm getting ready. And, um, and I think when they see my process and they see what my paintings are like, it becomes easier because they can see how loose and wonky and sort of free they are that they no longer feel so insecure about, you know, their knees or, you know, whatever body part they're uncomfortable about. And, um, and so it's been really rewarding. Do you know, I can see them visually, I can see them kind of um, easing into the experience and, and letting go of their, um, well, their shyness. But also I'm feeling very shy because I'm on the floor and they can see me and uh, I'm so exposed. I'm more exposed than they are, actually. I feel I'm more exposed because they're just a naked body where, <laughs> where this is my soul going down on the paper. So, um, yeah, and I think after the second painting, people are feeling like they've forgotten they're naked. There you go. All right, Hugh. Six minutes. Yeah. I'm very impressed. <sighs>
paintings. I just, I just love this one. That little face, that little bottom, those little tangled hands. It's one of my favorites. And this one as well, I like this one, but it's all Neville. It's my wonderful Neville. Um, how has your experience been this time at ZigZag? I know you've done this exhibition before, uh, three or four years ago, but how has it been this time? Or how has it been different? Uh, oh, it's been very different, actually, because of having people who aren't models coming in. Yeah, and that's that the big willingness. thing. Yes, yes, and, and their willingness to, to give so much to me of themselves. My process is a bit different because I realise I'm, I'm not trying to flatter them, but I'm trying to represent them more than when I had a model, a paid model. I could be freer, actually, I realise this. Freer with them? Freer with my way I'm painting. Okay. Because I have someone who's being paid and they don't judge how I paint them. Whereas people who are, oh, oh, do my breasts really look like that? So I have to, you know, I feel a little bit nervous about that. So the role is different in a way. It is a different, yes, yeah, it's more um, supportive role. Because as a model, I know that there are these rules that you have between a painter, drawer, artist and a model. And in a way, that creates a sort of neutrality, doesn't mm, it? Yes. Whereas with normal people, something else is going on. Yes. So it almost becomes like a sort of therapy. Yes, yes, there has been some therapy, actually, as people kind of um, um, uh, release certain trauma or yeah. anger or just releasing yeah and so and so i'm kind of witness to that yeah and so not supporting it like a counselor but supporting it and accepting them unconditionally people and it's not something I worried about so much when I'm working with the model is whether the colors right for them because the colors of the moment whereas working with people I'm trying to capture them and sometimes I just think oh you're not blue and I can't figure out their color and that's that makes me feel really vulnerable that I can't figure out their color
<laughs> so there were two questions that I wanted to just ask um, Brigham uh, in relation to this work, and then we'll sort of open it up, because I'm sure you've got lots of questions as well. Um, and one of them was uh, something we've alluded to a couple of times in the film and Megan was talking about earlier, which is this whole relationship with the model or the body or the person. Um, and I'd really like you to say a little bit more about that because you, obviously I watched Megan do it quite a few times and I was aware of her process. And this relationship and how you draw this incredible vulnerability out of people. I mean, you know, I did it for her and it's, you know, I, I, I've modelled on and off for years, but it felt it's such a huge space and there you are and you're, and you're trying to be honest about how you felt about lockdown. Um, you know, it's quite a big deal. So could you talk a little bit more about that and maybe give us some examples of dialogues that you had with people? Oh, wow. You can remember that. I don't know, there were so many of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting that I hadn't really thought of people modelling or standing uh, and having to capture so much. When you said about, you know, embodying, like, uh, uh, lockdown, um, yeah, I never really thought about it from yeah. the other perspective of how hard that would be as the model to be holding that uh, experience. But there are a few models here who might want to say something about how that was. Um, my relationship, well, I have a funny relationship with bodies, being brought the Catholic. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this far away thing. <laughs> um, but then later became a Shiatsu practitioner, so I touch bodies a lot in my daily week, weekly days. And, um, and I feel, I think the painting is very much, especially on this scale, life size and larger than life, it's it's like giving people shiatsu. And actually, and now I'm thinking that sometimes there's a bit of healing that's going on because I'm aware that someone might have a, a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not realizing this at the time, I'm realizing it as I stand here speaking, that I might be working on an area that needs some massage and some acupuncture or something. And um, <laughs> so for me, when I'm painting, there's so many levels, you know, I'm trying to capture the person and their beauty and just that lovely angle of their nose or the way they hold themselves. There'll be something so exquisite that it's only there for a second and I'm so, you know, I haven't got time to really hang about. It's just got to happen and it does or it doesn't. And, and yeah, I, I, it's hard to talk about. It's like going down the black run when you're skiing and you're not a black run skier, but you're on it and you just got to go down. It's a bit like that. The time, this is another thing that's quite important if, you, if you're not aware of it. There was a clock. So each person had three minutes, five minutes. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it was a double whammy, which is the one you saw. Uh, they had twice as much, didn't they? You had well, they twice. did have some. They actually six, six minutes. For yeah, some reason, minutes, they thought like me. Three seconds minutes. or but something. How yeah. does that feel? That thing of working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure. Yeah, actually, yeah. And it's good because if I had forever or an hour, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'd be angsting over everything that was wrong. Whereas, in a, in a five minute, you just you just go and I love that. That was really mm -hmm. exciting, but also incredibly tiring. At the end of the day, if I don't, you know, maybe. 20 paintings or something, or whatever. Um, I was pooped, really pooped. Okay, the other question I wanted to ask, and we can, as I say, open this up in a minute, is this whole thing of responding to lockdown, which is a big one. Um, I don't know how many other artists here try to do that. I did as well, but it's a big one because, you know, how do you speak about that? And, but uh, what I'm wondering is how you feel about it now in respect to it's done, you know, we have a film, we saw it, mm -hmm. you experienced it. How are you feeling about yeah. it now? Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wish I'd broken the rules more now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, I wish I'd been more rebellious. Mm -hmm. but I wish I'd been more knowing 
where we are now in it. Um, a lot of people needed to be touched and my work as a Shiatsu practitioner opened out before my work as an artist because I knew people needed physical contact, they needed healing. Uh, and, and so it's, it's hard to separate my painting from my Shiatsu life actually, they're really, really, really linked. Yeah, I'm probably know, the only amazing. healing type therapist who does hands on work with the mankiest, filthiest <laughs> fingernails and hands. Yeah. And people forgive me, which is so kind. <laughs> As you can say, I've just got this chair. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a hard answer, hard question to answer. Although um, I felt really tearful at the end of that mm -hmm. film. Um, that's why. That's oh, why. Yeah, I, it was, I, like, it was yeah. a story, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. that's why I added. I added right at the end the thing of her, of Megan putting the stuff away. That was extra the film before it ended when she said, you know, thank you to the models. Mm -hmm. And I felt that it was really important that mm -hmm. we had this putting away and this ending, mm -hmm. and that that made me feel sad. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And it was autumn, which is the time of grief and the, you know that time of going inward and. Um, and I don't know, it just reminded me of it. It was quite like the end of life in a way. And so many people lost their lives in this time for, for all the reasons that we died. And it had that poignancy of the end. And we celebrated while you we celebrated while we were here and now it's the end. And it's the end. Just one more thing. How do you feel that the space, because Zigzag is and particularly that space was so extraordinary. Um, how did you feel about that collaboration? Because you were, it was a site specific piece yeah. in that sense. Yes, absolutely mm -hmm. perfect. It couldn't have been a better venue. The space was just so huge. I don't know. Did, who didn't go? I didn't go. Oh, space was so huge. You could get a feeling in the film. Mm -hmm. And you could be at one end of the space and not see the other end. You would just see these people who were sort of. Moving around, sometimes they go. Oh, I saw something I recognize, and you, then you'd never find them again because they've spun, and then other pe other people have spun, and they've gone into different dialogues and communications, which probably could have only have been at the zigzag with the line, the little bits of drop that came in caused that to happen. Yeah, it was absolutely the most perfect place. The pigeons cooing. And I feel like the. Um the, the painting spinning were a little bit like the people dancing, you know, especially with each other as well. Yeah, and yeah. I totally relate to that thing. It's like you see something and then you can never find it again. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, I did very little um, curating. I just tend them up. In fact, one time I was in there, I don't know, about four o'clock in the morning because I was too, too <gasps> and couldn't sleep. And I came up and there was like one little light and I was there with this lovely check young man I met these ladders and couldn't see a thing just pinning them up <laughs> and then the, you know when the light the light the sun came up you could see oh I put X's relationship X's maybe <laughs> back to back or I put a hunky man who's always had his eye for somebody else next to a hunky girl <laughs> and I haven't meant any of this but there are little interesting stories happening as they went around that no, a lot of people wouldn't know but I, I would know because of knowing the people Okay, so I'm going to just open it up to general questions now because I'm sure lots of people do have questions. I hope you do because certainly, you know, I just kept on wanting to ask questions and I'm still asking questions. But are there any any questions from the floor this time? Well, I just keep thinking about bodies on paper because I don't know if you managed to get to see Suzanne Partridge. That recently there was an exhibition at the Zigzag Building or done by a woman, equally overpoweringly moving, of paper figures, life-size paper figures painted by refugees, and she brought them back from, um, from Lesbos, and they were Syrian and other places, Syrian refugees. And I did help her pack them away the other day, and she said, oh, I see them, they're like bodies to her. Oh. And I mean, some of those people have are possibly dead bodies she doesn't even know but when we piled them up it was like dealing with human beings so i'm sure it's the same for you that every one of those they're like people and are they all rolled up in lockdown again and what's their future and where are they going to go and i'm worried about them yes yes so am i yeah they're all rolled up in boxes that say named and unnamed because there's so much life it, even though it's on a piece of paper 
Mm. It's a whole body. And yeah, so I'm hoping, do you have any exhibitions um, planned? There is a place outside Exeter I'm hoping to hang in, but I'm, you know, there's a lot of health and safety issues because it's a falling down house. But, um, and maybe some saunas in London. I'm going to hang something there, but if anyone knows a big building, please let me know. Yeah, I haven't got a specific place yet, and I, I want them to come out, and I want more to be made. And my next question was, yeah, are they going to grow? Oh, yes. Yeah. They're okay. going to be more? Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. A thousand next time. Oh, that would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing to use an uh, outdoor public space, I mean, a, a place mm -hmm. where people mm -hmm. don't have to go to find them, but mm -hmm. where they come across them. I think that mm -hmm. would be, that would be really a great You can get into Glastonbury Festival. You know, and hang them in the woods. Uh, yeah, that would be really nice. Yeah. 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 Like like it. <laughs> it rains, mm. and that's, that's true. Perhaps you could PVA them. Yes. Yeah. Do you do you feel that you've gotten to know people through like because obviously you there's a mixture of people that you know, people that you've met, like acquaintances, people you know well, and complete strangers. Mm. Do you think the process has helped you make friends? in that set like get to know people better or get to know people at, at all yes or make maybe think of people that you've worked with now differently um because obviously it's it's an experience for you in one sense but it's also an experience for them and you kind of go through that together mm. Mm. um and in terms of the relationships with the people themselves that then become the, the paper how how do you feel about how that's kind of yes widened yes. your um, well, people I knew before, um, I know better, and it's like we've done an experience together. It's like when, whenever you do an experience with somebody that's out of the norm, bonds are, are formed, you know, are connected. So, so there's been that, and I've been so touched by people who told me really deep secrets. And you know, I've never said this before to anyone, and I hold those. Do you, you know. have any negative experiences? Because we imagine that it's all positive because it's this wonderful kind of creative process, but then also because of the vulnerability and because mm. of the time and the world right now, was there any way you were like, oh, that was uncomfortable, or that was maybe something I could have not dealt with today? <laughs> uh, no. That's not amazing. the only thing I wow. I've ruined my health. <laughs> <laughs> my body still oh, your knees. Yeah, my, my, my my ankles. So yeah, so yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to see a therapist next week. <laughs> to get back together. But um but no. Wow. No. No, a couple of times there was one time, wasn't there, Chris, when I said, This man, I'm not sure about coming. And Chris kind of kind of came up and kind of got a broom or something. I mean obviously it's a big space, so it was still discreet. But you know, it's fine. But you know, it is, you are vulnerable with a man you don't, you, you know, a person, you know, maybe if I'm a woman, a man, I don't know. Anyway, a person that you don't know and they're naked and you're not and you know, you're all alone and it's not socially, it's not socially normal. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, you did a, a call out originally for the, mm -hmm. the, for the models. How yeah. did it come about? Uh, how, how do you mean? How, well, uh, how did you. Uh, I think oh. the fact that you wanted lots of models to come, you know, oh. this display in that area, and you were going to paint them. Yeah, uh, Facebook and Instagram and um, what's that magazine? Evolver magazine. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then lots of emails. Mm -hmm. And did uh, did anyone turn up and decide it wasn't going to be for them straight away mm -hmm. because of the, the strange situation? Um, that not really, but there were obviously a bit of prevarication yeah. time was Because spent. you're not a professional model, so they didn't really know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and and did you suggest the pose? I mean, presumably not the one standing on the head. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> they chose that. Yeah, they chose that. No, 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 because some people say, what should I do? And I just say, do, do lockdown, I mean. you know, whatever lockdown was for you. Yeah. And so, it, depending, I did maybe four, two, four, five, depending on how the time was and everything. Um, but there must have been some people when they when you did the painting. I mean, maybe some people wanted more of a representation thing, which they aren't going to get in five minutes. Yeah, yeah. But did anyone sort of say, "Oh, I really like that," and they wanted it for themselves rather than part of the exhibition? Mm -hmm. Well, I did. Get, I'm sure some people would love yes, to roll it up and take it back. Yes. Well, everyone was there. 
our exchange was they could take one of the the one whatever one they wanted for themselves. Right. So everybody, almost everybody, went home. So there's another exhibition elsewhere. Yeah, exhibitions in houses. Yeah. Yeah. Big buildings. Yeah. 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 No. No. I don't think anyone came. No. No. No one came and then said, "Oh, actually, I'm not doing this." But um, I hope those of you who are here that model for me uh, that I was friendly enough to make you feel at ease, so that it wasn't too strange. The other thing, I've got a quick one from Melanie. That film, is that available anywhere? It, yes, it will be. I have. I mean, this is the premiere so of it, so, so, uh, but we'll put it on our website. YouTube. On YouTube? Yeah. Can on the Gallery YouTube. Gallery YouTube. Oh. And we'll probably yeah. post the film on Facebook because our Facebook Live didn't really work out. Yeah. yeah, so it will be there. Mm-hmm. And there's oh, also a, a, a much shorter version. There's a there's a sort of, that was, I think, 13 minutes, and I think there's a five minute version, which I made specifically so that uh, Megan could sell it, you know, because we obviously will want people to, you know, to, to do it again in some respect. But yes, it will be on our website. Um, you mentioned the colours, you know, how did you, how do you sort of, I don't know. I don't know, but when it's wrong, I know it's wrong. Yeah. 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 In fact, one I did, I, 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 oh, it's horrible. And she really told me a lot of her stuff that was happening in her life. No, 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 she hadn't yet. And, um, and the kind of just said, oh, God, this is horrible. And I cheated. And at the end of the five minutes, I went back and I drew around it. I just put her in a blue box and put some red in it or something. And I never, you know, I like, but I try not to cheat. Five minutes, five minutes. And, and I was like, oh my God, it looks like you're in a coffin. And she said, I died over lockdown. So that was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. But that was me trying to capture the color, but then I captured the color by cheating. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or just black and white as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, those those were from earlier. Oh, those okay. Were yeah. Yeah. So this is a bit of a similar question, but in terms of emotion, mood, and feeling, did you have like an instant sense of feeling from that person, or your own combined, or was it more a sort of after result of concentrating on the form? Mm. Uh, I probably picked up. Well, we do, don't we? Yeah. We pick up things from people. And we may not know it. Yeah. So, yeah, probably kind of to start with. And then, uh, you know, oh, look at their shoulder. What a lovely shoulder. <laughs> you know, and then you kind of fall, you just kind of fall in love with people as you're drawing them. You just mm-hmm. see all their, how beautiful they are. Just that shape right here. And, you know, there's just so much beautiful about people's bodies. Yeah, yeah. it's like an ongoing sort of free flow. Maybe sometimes subconscious as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think probably at all levels there will be something and very, and very intuitive. I get, you know, I get the feeling. I mean, obviously there's experience of doing it again and again and again because she did so many. Mm-hmm. But it, watching you do it, it felt really like something completely intuitive was happening. Mm-hmm. Well, there wasn't any sort of intellectual decisions in a way. It was like exactly how Megan was feeling about those people. And it was particularly fascinating watching her do it with those two guys because of the position they was in, they were in, but also because you know them. And that that dialogue was absolutely fascinating yeah. as it developed. And it wasn't, you know, your best picture. It wasn't about that. It was about how the colours came and the shape came and the strokes came. It was absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised when seeing the film of myself, mm. um, mixing paint for them, and I, and I was just about ready to go, well, that's not right. And then I had to do something else. I'm like, well, that's interesting. I don't remember doing that, but I thought, well, that's interesting. Something wasn't right. I didn't even know what the color was because it hadn't gone on the paper. Oh, that's curious. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought, thought about doing a self-portrait and hanging yourself amongst them, joining mm-hmm. your crowd? Ah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And what's your response to that? Uh, yeah, I could do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But you have, have you done self-portrait in your normal yeah. Yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to say, as, as somebody who did one for you, you make people feel special. Oh. It felt it was a special... Obviously, the experience of being painted, it's not the only time I've done life drawing, but that experience in the space, and because you kind of painted, it was already hanging when 
you're modeling, you know, there was already people and you kind of, you're becoming part of what's around you and the experience, it, it felt very special and different to other life modeling experiences, very different to other life modeling experiences that I've had in the past. Yes, I agree. Very enjoyable. Yeah. And fun, it was fun. Sometimes it can be a bit boring, you know, it was kind of like waiting and doing things, but that one it was like, oh, it, it's like part of this action of just becoming this big thing. Mm. It was really, really nice. Yeah, but, yeah, I was going to say, I did to that, and we're going to model as well. I felt a real sense of freedom and a lot of strength, um, not just from the experience of you, but also what was going on around. And, you know, feeling that, you know, even though I was naked, that was me. That was totally me. And you know, sold the world. This is me. I'm saying what I'm going to say. I've got no coverings. This is me, absolute honesty. And it was very, very empowering. Mm. You know, not you know, having done life classes, but not actually models before. It was a very interesting experience, anyway. Mm. But I did feel that. And just looking at that film again made me realise that when we were in that space how safe it felt mm. and how free it felt mm. and like it was just like this little bit of freedom and you know the world is outside of that and this was a really safe space where people were unmasked because mm. mm. none of them were wearing masks mm. Mm. Oh, no. they're just like people mm. um and spinning around doing their own thing you know just going with the flow and we've all been so enclosed and then just seeing all these bodies moving and just being um, in that safe space it was just really lovely going back there and it just made me realise that spending so much time in that space how it made me feel at the time was free really free and safe really safe yeah because actually when they when I was um, filming the two guys some people that I sort of knew came in to look at the exhibition and I wasn't concerned about them seeing them or anything like that. It was just in terms of the film and the noise. So I sort of did that and it sort of tiptoed around. But there was this wonderful feeling. The whole time I was there, I agree with you. And I talked to Rosa, the wonderful viola player, who was just extraordinary. Uh, she would, she talked about that. And this is lovely feedback for you, Chris, in terms of the zigzag and the space. Mm. But, you know, people felt very held by the space mm. and the work. Uh, which is another reason why I wanted to make the film because I felt we should continue this, you know, we should share it with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the best well, thing you could say. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I had a question, but uh, Megan answered it very well already, which was about the relationship between the portraits themselves. And yes, you want to add to that, but I just would like to say what a really good and moving film that was. Mm -hmm. um, because of both of you doing it, but I'm sure everybody feels that, which hasn't that been mentioned. But it's absolutely excellent and, and profound and moving, and I hope lots of people had a chance to see it. And, and I think it should have a regular effect. It was a very good representation, actually. Mm -hmm. It felt like mm -hmm. you were in the space having been there. Yeah. And I've never made a film of somebody else's work before. I mean, it's part of my practice as an artist, but I've never made. I've never had that connection with somebody else's work mm. and it was so powerful. Mm. So thank you because we, you know, I, I sort of let it go because I was waiting to show it. But I think we will try and get it out into the world. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so I think enough. Yeah. Enough. We can yeah. talk informally now. There's tea and cake and coffee. Mm. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, can I tell you, you that the next uh, talk is in a month's time and it is Helen Ottaway who is a composer and she will play you music and she will show you slides and she's a very good um, presenter uh, and it's free again so April look on our website it's in literally a month's time so i can't remember the day april the night thank you so much April the night please come and thank you so much